We may all go through the stages of grief. We can deny it. We can try and bargain with God. We can get worried, angry, and depressed about it. And then finally, we will have to accept it and deal with it. And remember, acceptance means that we don't have to like it. We just have to accept that it has happened. And do our best to move on from that struggle of denying it, bargaining, being angry, being sad. It will always leave a certain mark on our soul, but we can endure it and grow from it and learn from it. That's the most important thing. What can we learn from our sufferings? What do we learn in the midst of the struggle and the stages of grief, stages of suffering? And sometimes it takes a long time. We all go through the stages in different ways. And at different periods, some of us, it might go through them in one day, then others a couple weeks, then others years and years. As we suffer, though, the other people around us suffer too. This is not easy either. We don't like to hear and see other people suffer, especially people we love. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to help them. We don't know how to let them just be and go through it and learn from it. But what do they say? Get off the cross because we need the wood, right? Because it is Jesus who saves us. We can't save anybody. But yet we want answers. Job's friends wanted answers. Job wanted answers, right? They wanted to know why he was suffering. And that's why this is one of the oldest books in the Bible, because this is the quintessential question that humanity has been asking. As long as we've been writing, we've been asking this question. Why does a loving God let us suffer? Why do we suffer? Is there redemptive suffering? Why God, why? We may ask, just like Job, why this, why that, why, why, why? Cry, cry, cry. Instead, we should ask, Lord, what shall I learn from this? So as we cry out to God, we may feel like Job did. We might not hear anything from God, we might not feel or experience any consolation. Consolation is that spiritual gift where we're overwhelmed by God's love and acceptance and peace after major struggles with suffering. And we might only feel like we are immersed in darkness. This is a part of the dark night of the soul. It is sometimes during these times of darkness when God is with us in greater ways that we cannot see or hear or experience, we might not even believe it. This is when we feel totally and utterly alone and lost, no matter how much we cry out to God. But just like the poem Footprints, it is during these times that God is carrying us, that God is working on us in ways that we cannot yet imagine or comprehend. And Brian McLaren in his book, Naked Spirituality, suggests that we might ask what possible good in the future can come from this present suffering, no matter how we choose to deal with it, internally or with others. We are all broken before God. We are all broken before God. It's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken. Hallelujah. 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 all broken before God. So number one, we cry out to God with broken